What is up guys? I am Alex from Level Up Plus VFX and today I want to show you a video where I'm going to go over a method that can really help uh, when it comes to adding extra detail to pretty low resolution textures. So this is a post I recently released on my Instagram. This is the actual final version and this was the first version of the scene. And this was all actually really using just two nodes in order to add a huge load of detail to a pretty low resolution texture. And I think it basically saved the scene because if I hadn't done this, it would have just looked super weird, super boring, almost like something out of a video game in low te resolution textures at that. And the great thing about this is it takes you probably about 30 seconds to set up. So um, here's another example of the same shot, uh, but at a different angle. You know, we have all this detail in this texture on the sides and on the flooring, especially. I think it looks really cool. Um, and none of this was actually in the original version. Um, so if we pop into Blender here, uh, we actually have this exact shot set up. Uh, now the camera is in a different position because I set it up for a different render, but the principles remain the same. Um, we have these textures, and when we look through the camera, uh, let's look through camera one here, it looks pretty bland. They look pretty boring. Um, uh, let's turn off this volume uh, as well because this is just kind of distracting at the moment and causing my resolution to drop so um so yeah we have this uh we have this environment here and it looks pretty good i'm pretty happy with how it looks but the textures on these objects just look really boring and that's because these objects are meant to be pillars they're not meant to be these huge objects in a scene they're meant to be something small uh and i have just turned them into basically the centerpiece of this scene uh so how do we fix this? It's very easy, and it's through, you probably guessed it already, just the power of the bump map. No, not the roughness map, the bump map, uh, because the bump map basically is a free detail generator, and it costs almost nothing on your system if you're doing it the right way. Um, so instead of using the bump map that came with this texture, and I actually don't think there was one, there was just a textures.com uh, texture, uh, I just want to add one quickly from Quixel Bridge. So um, you can use any texture. I found that this damaged asphalt texture worked best for me. As I was going through my library, and I have a bunch of textures that I've saved, I also was like, oh, anything really rocky would look good. So this damaged asphalt is another uh, is one that looks good. Um, and then there, I guess these are both called damaged asphalt. <laughs> but these two looked really nice. Uh, this rocky ground one would also probably be really good. Anything that just looks like it's going to have a really detailed and really interesting roughness map, because uh, that's what we're going to be using to drive our bump map. It's weird. We're not actually using the bump map. We're using the roughness map. I just liked the way it looked more. This might be interesting. You know, uh, I don't know how it would turn out. It might turn out a little weird, but, you know, feel free to try things. For now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to this damaged asphalt material and I'm going to export it. And we're going to go back into Blender. And I'm just going to add it in onto this material. So I'm going to go over here, go over to damaged asphalt, and we're not actually assigning this to the anything. We're just going over to copy the roughness map. So I'm going to just copy that, control C, uh, and then go back over to your main material and paste it in. Um, and we're just going to plug this into the normal map. But if you plug it just directly into the normal map, it's going to look all wonky. It's going to look completely wrong. And uh, that's because this isn't actually normal map data. So we need to add a normal uh, a bump map node. Um, I'm not using the normal. I'm using the bump because I want it to look different. And we're going to make sure that this is plugged into the height. Um, so if we look through the camera now, I think we can already see. Yeah, we can already see that we're getting some free detail. You know, this, this plain flat face now has some variation to it. And maybe, maybe this is all you want. Uh, maybe you just wanted a little bit of bumpiness to it, make it feel a little bit more natural. Um, but I think we can actually push it further. So the first thing I'm going to do is do Control T on my texture, uh, which is something you can do if you have Node Wrangler enabled, which I hope you do. You should. Um, and we're just going to change the scale of this texture. I want it really small because I want some fine detail. So I'm just going to increase the scale of the texture. And it doesn't really matter if it's repeating because, again, it's a bump map. You're still getting the variation from the normal materials. Uh, color so you're not no one's going to really be able to tell oh this is a repeating a repeating tiled texture you know i um, mean if you did you'd probably still be able to use something like the uh the polygon uber mapper to uh fix that so wow now so that instantly really helps huh 
I think that's really adding detail now once we're at 0.5. Uh, let's go look at that other camera angle now. Um, and yeah, that's getting really close. Um, the one thing I did here is when you add a bump map, that's basically free roughness. Uh, so you can actually lower your roughness to get some more specular, specular highlights. So if I lower this all the way down to zero, for example, these objects up here still actually look like they have a bit of roughness to them, even though they have a roughness of zero. And that's because it's just catching all the light. Um, it's not, if, for example, if we take this normal map off, oh, now everything's super reflective. But if we put it back on, even though there's still a roughness of zero, it looks pretty rough. So it's a pretty cool trick. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a color ramp uh, just to this in between here because uh, I want a little bit more finer control over how uh, bumpy this is, so to speak. So if you crank it all the way up, it's going to be pretty bumpy. Um, and then if you crank it all the way down, it's going to lose its bumpiness. Uh, so let's do that. And then I'm going to just put this somewhere like right here. And if you want to really see what I'm doing, you can do control T or, or yeah, control shift on the texture and you can see exactly where you are. So I'm going to do, let's do it like that. And then let's look through it. And if we look through that, yeah, I'd say that's just about exactly where I had it uh, before. Um, and I think that, or at least if it's not, it looks as good, if not better. Um, and that is just completely free. Uh, you know, it's not really a performance hitter by a lot. Um, you know, that's basically a very free and easy way to add any sort of, you know, detail to a super low res texture. I mean, again, this is what it looked like before the normal map and the roughness change. And this is after. It's night and day difference. And it took, what, two nodes to set up, you know, three, I guess, three nodes to set up. And it just looks so much better. So I hope you guys found that useful. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, and if you liked it a lot, leave it a like. Uh, I said that backwards. But anyway, you take care. I hope you guys had a happy holiday and enjoy your new year. Peace.